Jacob. Hi, Kim. How are you? I'm okay. Thank you. How are you doing today? Yeah, not too bad. Good. Um, Jacob, could you start off with just telling us a little bit about yourself and also a little bit about um, your organization? Of course. So, uh, my name is Jacob Allen. Um, I'm in my third year at university in Guildford at the University of Surrey. Um, I'm originally from Brighton. I've been a Labour member for four years now, and I'm the co-chair of Surrey Labour Students. Great. Um, tell me a little bit about Surrey Labour Students. So, Surrey Labour Students is the, the society in the University of Surrey for the Labour movement, not just the Labour Party. So we encompass trade unionists, anarchists, progressive socialists, the whole broad church of, of the left. Um, and we really do three things. We, we campaign, and that involves sort of activism on specific issues, and it involves electioneering. Mm -hmm. There's uh, the education aspect, where we do debates, workshops, get speakers in, that kind of thing. Um, and the other thing is just social activities and hanging out with friends. You know, we've done picnics, mm -hmm. we do sports sometimes, you know, things like that. It's important, isn't it? It's important to have a whole, a whole semester. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, can you tell me a little bit about what you're working on right now? Sure. So if I, I work backwards through the year, um, so just recently, um, we organised as a kind of um, a collective on, on the University of, of left-wing organisations. Mm -hmm. And we were part of uh, planning the, the Red Strike uh, that people were organising because the university were trying to force students to uh, pay for the final term uh, of their of their accommodation contracts, even though the university is shut down and they've all been told to go home. So they're okay. trying to make them pay for an empty room. Right. Uh, you know, um, and about three days, maybe a week after after we announced the rent strike, they said, "Oh no, oh no, we, we were never going to plan on doing that." But so their PR people went to work on it. Yeah. Um, but we, I think it was our kind of pressure. I think so too. That made them capitulate. Uh, before that, we were planning to, um, to do stuff around the Police and Crime Commission elections, which is meant to be in a few days' time. But of course, the Electoral Commission um, postponed all elections for next year. Um, and before that, we, we had our heads firmly locked on the 2019 general election mm -hmm. for Christmas, um, registering students to vote, because of course, most of them have just arrived in Guildford from all over the country, all over the world. And so we had to get them registered. Uh, then we had to get them knowing what Labour's policy was, and then on the day, getting them out to vote, making sure yeah. they vote. Yeah, that, that, um, that was some good work too, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, students were, were queuing to vote. I mean, I've never had to queue to vote before. Right. And then this time they, they're waiting in line. Yeah, that was real. That was a very, very mm -hmm. inspiring sight. I noticed that. I mean, it, Corbyn inspired a lot of the youth vote. Yeah. Definitely. Um, can you, what, will we, can we talk a little bit about how the pandemic is, has affected students? Mm. So, um, the, the government ignored two groups, basically, when it came to coronavirus, and that was the self-employed and students. Um, and they quickly mopped up after the, the self-employed fiasco because the tabloids made a lot of fuss about it. Um, but students, not as much, because yeah. you know, we're forgotten. Um, I know people that were, that were fined by the police when they tried to go back home from university because they just, the guidelines were not clear and they flip flopped. So one minute they said it was essential travel and then the next minute it wasn't essential travel and you were told to stay where you are. Um, which is one of the reasons why I'm still in Guildford now and not in Brighton. You know, we be walking along the beach on the seafront. Uh -huh. um, so the, the government has not been very good to students and especially the fact that most students, if not all, uh, that are, well, they won't be all, there might be a few landlord uh, students, um, we're all renters. Yeah. And the government have put in put things in place for homeowners in regards to their mortgage. There's nothing for renters. We're still 
pay through yeah. the notice of private landlords. That's something I've been really worried about. I mean, I think you don't need a crystal ball to see how that's going to end up in June when yeah. people who are probably on low incomes, or many who are anyway, have to come up with three months rent. Yeah, and the government asked nicely that landlords don't evict people. Yeah, I know. You know, because <laughs> my, my contract ends in, in June. Luckily, I've renewed it for another year. But if my landlord wanted to get me out, nothing I can do. I'd be, right. be on the street. Yeah, it's really, it's so stressful right now. And, and you know, for people caught in that limbo, it's yeah. really hard. Um, yeah. Um, can you talk about some of the work you, you've been particularly proud of? Um, so, one of the best things we've done in my time on the committee and the organization was um, in 2018, the UCU trade union, that's the university and colleges union, they went on strike over pensions. Um, and so we, on behalf of uh, sympathetic students, uh, marched up to the vice chancellor's office, uh, demanded a meeting, which he gave within about an hour. Um, and one of our demands was that all staff at the University of Surrey be put on the living wage. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, and then they did that, and the the trade unions at the university uh, attribute that that success to our to our activism. Um, and so the cleaners, the groundsmen, those on the lowest paid incomes, yeah. got a pay rise. Yeah, just I'm, because we made our voices heard. That's so fantastic. I mean, that that is labor in action right there. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And, you know, if that's what a few dozen students can do, I know. imagine what yeah. loads of them can do. Well, that's, yeah, <laughs> that's what we're hoping to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, can you tell me what are the challenges that you have in activated, activating the under 30 demographic? So it was, um, it was very easy to get young people excited when Jeremy Corbyn was leader, mm -hmm. um, especially in that, that honeymoon period after 2017. Yep. Um, and we've yet to see what it will be like under the new leader, under Keir Starmer. Um, but students, especially, students especially and young people, are very political. Um, it's whether they're party political and they can believe in a party system. That's right. the question. A lot of them, a lot of young people believe in proportional representation um, and things like that. Um, so it's it's trying to to find that in for students to connect being political mm. with how how you achieve it and the way you achieve it in the current system is you either get involved in the Labour Party or the Tory Party. <laughs> well, that kind of leads me into my next question, which is, um, what do you tell people? of that age group, mm. why they should join Labour and get active in the party? Well, since, since the 1980s, really, there's been a generational gap that's been building. And I think we're at the first point where our position now, we're in a worse position than our, our parents were at this point. Our parents didn't have to pay tuition fees. Our parents got council houses and didn't have to pay through the nose to private landlords. Yeah. You know, our parents were in good unionized jobs, not in the gig economy, you know. Um, and so we need to kind of roll back the clock on, on, on what workers deserve. And the only way to do that is by campaigning for the yeah. labor movement. There's one party that's going to stand up. Definitely. For There's you. one party that's gonna, you know, yeah. Fight for the bosses and one that's going to fight for us. That's right. That's right. Um, do you have any suggestions for other CLPs or for my CLP in reaching out to that demographic? I'd definitely say that you need to build a space where young people can kind of meet each other, especially those before the university age. Because before you go to university, your whole life has just been around people mm -hmm. in terms of your friends that were born in the exact same year as you. Uh, like, you know, I was clumped together with people born in 1998. 
up until about three years ago. Um, and for some people, it's hard to, to just go in a room with people over 40 yeah. and try and make a connection. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you need to make a space where people have that social interaction. Uh, and having a youth officer is a, a really key way to kind of bridge that gap. Um, the other thing is to make sure you have meetings that are around the topics that interest young people. Because uh, as much as Labour Party members love the NHS, if you're under 30, you don't think about it that much. Right. Um, you know, if, if you're under 30, the NHS is where you go if you break your leg. While playing right. Basketball. Well, you're healthy. <laughs> Generally, yeah. Um, so things like education, housing, climate change is the big one. Mm-hmm. Um, all the youth strike stuff. That is stuff that's engaging to, to young people. Yeah, that's great. Those are great tips. Okay. Um, well, the last question I really have is how can Southwest Surrey Labour support you in your efforts? Mm. Well, you um, already have because um, Councillor Nick Palmer came and gave a talk to us about uh, animal welfare. She's very big on, on um, animal rights policy. Um, and we did that in, in conjunction with um, the vet students at the university, which was very good. Um, but the other thing is that next year, uh, we have the Surrey County Council election. Mm-hmm. And I think the nearest marginal seat for you guys is the University of Surrey. <laughs> so we'd love to campaign alongside you. Well, I would love to help you and I'll put the word out. Definitely. And we'll see if we can, you know, show up and help you campaign out there. Well, Jacob, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. I want to thank you again for giving me your time. Thank and you very much for having me and organizing this. It's a great no idea. Problem. It was my pleasure. And take care of yourself, okay? You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.